Hello, my name is Oyi Egbeyemi. I'm a director at the Foreshow School and I am passionate about human capital development. I studied engineering essentially because I I'm good at, I was good at maths, physics and chemistry. Those were my strongest subjects in school. I initially wanted to be an architect, but because I did not take design and technology during my A-levels, I could not apply for architecture. So engineering was essentially the logical pro progression for me. After having studied engineering, I worked in engineering for about a year. And then I realized that I wasn't really getting much fulfillment from my job. I was essentially going and ticking, basically ticking a checklist of things to do every day. It wasn't, I didn't feel like I was empowering myself or anyone around me through an engineering career. I don't, I mean, I mean it's, it's a good career to have. I mean, a lot of engineers earn a lot of money, a lot more than I'm earning right now. But for me, what I see as fulfillment is not just financial. For me, I have to feel like I'm making a difference. Now, what did education come in? Education was never really my plan. I never thought I would work directly in the education industry, but I had already started volunteering in organizations like Toastmasters, which focus on human capital development. So, education. I think my mom somehow roped me in some way. She and I were on, uh, on holiday some, in the summer of 2016, and I had just resigned from my job in consulting because I think I just, I just needed a break then. And then we just got talking. I was applying for an MBA then, and I didn't want to put it down that I was unemployed at the time of my application. And then my mom said, oh, well, you're a director at the school. Why don't you, so and by, the, by the school, I mean the Foreshore School, which is the family business. And that's where she has been working. She had been working for about 10 years. So I was like, okay, well, I am a director at the school. I, I'm a part business owner, although I'm not directly involved in the day-to-day -day activities. I'm involved in some decisions that are made and why don't I just put it down as a place of employment just so that my application will look good as well. So I went into the school, I, did, I started out doing a survey with the children, with the, with the teachers and the staff just to understand what the organization was about. I did a strategy session with the staff of the school and that is when I got hooked because I saw a lot of opportunity for growth. It's, it's good enough that at a school you're developing children and you're seeing them reap the benefits of everything you put into them. But for me as well, this is an organization where I see the growth in everybody that walks into it. So even the staff as well, I see myself making a direct impact in their own personal lives and their personal development. And for me, that is fulfillment. So the school, is one it's unique in the sense that there's only one arm per classroom we don't do two arms we don't want to make it grow to an extent that we don't even know the children at our school for us it's extremely important that everybody knows everybody so i know every single child's name in this school and not only just their names, I know them in terms of their character, their personality traits, their behavior. I'm always very excited when we have meet, so we have these senior leadership meetings where the head of school, who is doing a fantastic job, calls the heads of departments and everybody talks about the peculiarities of the children in their department. So they talk about progress. But for us, progress is not just academic progress. It's actually like social progress. It's psychological pro progress. We're able to monitor each child individually. I know that, oh, uh, maybe everyone wasn't talking, to, uh, talking today. Did something happen at home? 
and it would be a thing where we were like, oh, Ebon's mom, if we see Ebon's mom, for instance, we would be like, Ebon's mom, did something happen at home? Or Ebon was upset at school today. It's, just, it's that kind of individualized attention such that the parents feel like we're actually really deliberately caring after their children as individuals, not just as a group of children. So we have different ways of tracking progress, right? We have review sessions. So most of, because of the peculiarity of education, it's hard to come out with statistics and say everybody, like you can't just say within six weeks, we have this, we mark a survey of how, of everybody's happiness. We do do our annual surveys where we measure how the parents are faring at school and we ask them how their children are also doing. But for us, this is the daily reports that we focus on. We focus on speaking to the parents every day, especially in our preschool, in our preschool and nursery classes. For, for the preschool classes, they get, the parents get daily reports so that they have conversations with them. Every half term we have parent-teacher conferences where the parents come in and they talk to the teachers of their, their children's teachers about the progress they've made over the first half of the term. So what also happens after those parent-teacher conference sessions is that they, the parents fill in a feedback report on their children and we ask very specific and deliberately crafted questions to understand how they are actually doing. And then we we'll go back to this data and then compare it, compare, we we'll compare previous data for subsequent sessions so that we know that we're actually making progress. So somehow it is, it is like qualitative prog progress, but we try to quantify it through the follow-up process. <music> about Ready Set Work, I think in 2017, a friend of mine volunteered for it. And so by 2017, that's when I just started getting into, getting invo more involved in the education sector. So a friend of mine had mentioned that, oh well, I'm part of this program where we help graduates become more effective in the workplace. And I was like, oh, this is quite an intriguing idea because when I was in London, I got an internship through a, an NGO as well called Sponsors for Educational Opportunities or SEO London. Many people who went to school in London will know about it. So basically it was a, an avenue for ethnic minorities to get training and internship positions at investment banks. So I went through the program and I thought it was a fantastic program because they, there were so many tips, there were so many networking opportunities and I thought it was very empowering. So when I heard of Ready Set Work, I was like, well, this is a very similar concept to SEO. And what was even better was that it's for a longer period of time because there's this 13 week training program and then there's a full year internship for these children in penultimate year at universities in Lagos. Why I was involved in it was because I saw a, I saw a lot of opportunity for impact to be made. What I liked about the government, so the Ministry of Education then, the special advisor was the one who was driving the initiative, was that he saw an opportunity to engage the private sector directly into our public universities, such that they would even have the opportunity to employ these people at their own organizations. So, Whenever people talk about partnerships, there has to be some sort of balance in terms of how much people are giving and how much they're getting out of this because as much as people want to help, people need to know that there's something that they're getting out of it as well. So I think that dialogue between the pu pu public and the private sector needs to, I think it can piggyback off such an initiative whereby it is planned in a way that it is structured by the public sector, by the Ministry of, of Education in a way that the private sector can see where it can have direct inputs and also have also reap direct benefits so that it's a win-win for both because really the public sector cannot do everything alone there's so many children in Lagos like given our population of what 20 million about thereabouts officially there thereabouts and there are so many children on the streets the, the the public sector cannot realistically handle everything alone fine with the new government in place the budget for education has been 
I think it has been more than doubled, which is fantastic. But even as at that, there are too many things from infrastructure to curriculum to employability to the entire scope of education, right from early years to tertiary education. There is opportunity to partner and make an impact. And anybody in Lagos who says that they're not affected by education is actually joking because if you do not educate people well, you won't get people to work well for you. I know the kind of struggles we go through at the school in terms of recruitment. We have graduates, everybody's looking for a job. We get applications, we get like, there's a time I sent out a, an address for a job post. I got about 300 applications within, not even up to, within about 12 hours. I got 300 applications, but I could only shortlist to about 20 because everything was not up to the standard I wanted. So it is a pure reflection of the system we have in place. So I think it's important that, yes, the public sector needs to do a lot of work, but they also, there also needs to be a marriage between all stakeholders as long as the vision is shared and the benefits are clear.